Now I need a smaller brush. You also get your favorite brushes, where you'll have for years and years and years, and they'll work really well, and they'll also start looking pretty pitiful. But this is probably my favorite number one brush. And what I want to do is I want to grab uh, some yellow. This is going to be pretty stark. I, I think I'm going to do a wash, so I'm going to go with a, a pretty bright yellow. Okay, and I might shoot an orange in there. I'm going to add a little browns to these since I've got enough, enough of the colors around. And it's, you might think this is going to look funny, and it might, but everything we do, we're doing on the air, and we're willing to accept it. One thing, I, I do clean my brush a lot with my tongue and my mouth, I just do. So now I'm just going to take the yellow, and the sculptor did a great job on the dots, so I'm just going to find certain dots, and I'm not going to, I'm going to try to not pattern. And that's one of the harder things, is you just kind of dot there, dot over here, dot here, dot here. But you try not to get it so it looks really uniform, like, like you're trying really hard. Okay, I might just stick with that for now. I'm going to come back with orange and get some and get some more dots with orange. But I think that's a good start. I'll kick a couple more out here on the tail. This thing makes me want to keep going. Okay, and then I'm going to flip it around and catch them on this side. And this is kind of nicer because I can actually rest my hand on the dinosaur when I'm doing his tail. That's kind of nice. And it's taking a little more time than I wanted. I'm just going to kick out some more orange here and call it a day. I hope you can see the colors. I know there's a large contrast with the white and the black and the studio light. Um, I'm not happy with that yellow spot, but I think I can fix that up. I'm going to do a quick antiquing to it. And I change to a smaller brush. Right there. It's a quick dot pattern. Just something to add a little color, add a little flair to them. Make them a little bit different. Now, I need that to dry a little bit, but I'm going to find another bigger brush. I tend to use a lot of big brushes. And I'm not going to antique the whole thing. I'm just going to kind of antique the top where the, uh, the fins are, or where the uh, dot pattern is. But what I was thinking about doing first is kind of giving the frill some red while I'm in the middle of it. So I'm going to grab a red red and let me paint that frill up. And I'm going to do a semi-dry brush, uh, not really a dry brush. I'm going to grab a number three brush. That's a little bit bigger. I'm going to get the paint on it, get rid of most of it so it doesn't come out in a big swoop. Then, I'm going to start up here, because if it's redder on top, that's all right. And then have it kind of fade in down here. And nothing real special or hard, just trying to keep it out of the cracks to some extent. Anything that I do get in there, I'll be able to fix up with the uh, with the um, uh, the antique. I need to do that on the inside and the out. And again, I'm holding this at a angle. I'm hoping you can see it. Right here. 
made some red on the frill. That'll turn out good. And one thing I can do while I got the red out is crank in his mouth. Just kind of wash it off in there. And to clean the brush, leave some of the ridges going. And moving around really fast. I hope you can follow. Doing this kind of stuff isn't the best thing for your brush, as I just saw some hairs flying around on this. This is an older brush, so I tend to beat it up a little bit. I'll have to be buying me a new one. Another thing I need to do at this time, while I got the red out, is I'm going to go back to my number one, and I want to get the gum line. That way, when I get to the teeth, so I'm just, actually, I'm painting the teeth, but I'm trying to get up into its mouth to get, like, the gum line. I, I need to do that on top and bottom. This is going to be a harder thing. I'm doing it at an angle I'm hoping to demonstrate to you. A lot of times I'll walk into a model not knowing exactly what colors I want it to be and kind of making decisions on the fly. Another thing I can do is with most eyes, the eyes I make, especially with human eyes, I like to lay down a red first, and that way when I come back with white, I'll have the red around it, like the, uh, the veins on the outside of your eye. So I can do this at the same time. Some of this might be obscured with the, uh, the uh, antiquing, but I'll already have a base there. So there, that shows you how quickly you can frill it out. And it's not really a dry brush, I'm just kind of brushing over it and trying not to get into the cracks. Okay, now I want that to dry just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you how I've worked this. This is a, a gel medium that allows your paint to not dry as fast. And what I want to do is I want to get a really dark brown, a darker brown than I have, and use a little of that. Oh, there's a little paint. and. This gel medium, and it's about a 50-50. And again, this was taught to me by Chris Gerke, who's been on other shows and actually did this on our second show. It's a good effect, a really good effect. Ever since I saw it, I've been using this thing up. So again, I use the bottom of my brushes, and you can tell some of my brush tips are pretty thick from doing this, and I don't clean them off well. Um, I notice as I'm doing it that it is kind of close to the same color, so I'm probably going to grab just a dot of black And add to that. Black. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. Cheating is okay. So what I did do, instead of black, I'm adding just a dab of blue, which could even make it a little more interesting. Okay, it's a little bit darker. And I think I've given that enough time to dry. I'm going to take another quick peek, because the inside of the mouth is where I was worried the most. But it looks kind of dry. I might have some washing problems there. Uh, with a wash, you need to have a nice clean rag. And you're going to, you, uh, I'll damp it after I get this thing sprayed on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet up my brush. I'm going to go into this. I'm just going to kind of paint over what I just did. This isn't going to be as dark as I hope, but one thing it will do is it'll make the uh, orange and yellow a little bit closer to its natural brown color. And I can get cover up some of that stuff on his face where I thought I went a little too far with that yellow. 